All right, so this is Stephen Chin for our Night Hacking J-Focus interviews. And today I'm going to be interviewing Eric Romner Please about his Raspberry Pi performance testing wall. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about what your motivation for this, um, this project was. Uh, well, actually, uh, we were working with a, um, a customer, and uh, we were building a network server. Mm -hmm. And uh, the server had very high requirements for uptime. It uh, was to be up basically all the time. Uh, it also had uh, high requirements for performance. We uh, needed to support 50,000 uh, concurrent network connections to it. And uh, we also needed to handle 100 business transactions per second uh, at a sustained rate. And uh, we were also using SSL, so there were SSL handshakes going on uh, right. in that time as well. Uh, and the server used a combination of a, a custom binary protocol and, and SOAP. Uh, also, there were very strict rec uh, security requirements. So, so you couldn't uh, just outsource it to a cloud service like yeah, Amazon? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we needed to ensure that uh, things were tested. And uh, we thought about the uh, usual uh, alternatives. We thought about um, using a single server, dedicated mm -hmm. server, uh, about using the uh, developer workstations, setting them up uh, using Grindr or some other framework. We also thought about using the cloud, but as you said, uh, the uh, security requirements were quite strict, so we couldn't get the cloud in through the firewalls. Uh, also, we wanted to run uh, sustained tests for very long times, and uh, with the cloud, that would actually have been quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, so um, finally, I thought about uh, buying uh, cheap Raspberry Pi computers and uh, setting them up on a, on a wall uh, and uh, using them to run the tests. Cool. And how, how has this worked out for you? It's worked out very well, actually. Uh, the key thing to, uh, to think of is to keep costs down, because the Raspberry Pi itself is very cheap. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when you start to add um, all the peripherals you need, uh, it adds up. So uh, what, uh, what we did was uh, we bought Raspberries for about $25 a piece, mm -hmm. and then we soldered them directly to a power supply, so we didn't <laughs> have to buy USB uh, power cables. OK, so it's a little of our savings there. Yeah, uh, and we bought memory cards, network cables, and then uh, the important thing as well is to, uh, to find a cheap switch, because if you buy a really small switch, you will get it uh, uh, for nothing. Uh, but uh, as uh, you add more units, you need larger and larger switches, and eventually you end up with an enterprise uh, price tag switch. Yes, that's true. So uh, you, you need to find a balance, as, man, as many raspberries as possible uh, before you get to the enterprise switch level. And it turns out that uh, the uh, largest what's, switch what's you can buy... What's the magic number? ...is 48. 48. Uh, 48 raspberries. <laughs> So uh, both uh, our wall and the Hazel cost um, supercomputer with Raspberries both use the same model of switch, actually. OK. Um, so that's that. And we ended up at about uh, $3,000 for 48 units. So that's, I mean, as far as performance, corporate performance testing clusters, that's a pretty good price tag. Yeah. So you're going to put your mark up on this and sell this at the show now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I know uh, of at least one company, I don't remember the name, but they have copied the solution and built a wall themselves. Oh, very nice. So in that respect, I think it will stick around. Uh, one of the choices we had to make was uh, which Java version we uh, were to use, because mm -hmm. at the time we did this, uh, the uh, Java SE 8 embedded was still in early release. It was not legal to use it. Uh, Java SE 7 embedded uh, was usable, but it required a license, and uh, it also only supported soft floats uh, on the Raspberry. Uh, OpenJDK was free and supported hard floats, uh, but uh, as you can see in the chart here, um, it is uh, much, much slower. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in September last year, Oracle actually released uh, their JDK for uh, Raspbian, so now we can use the uh, real thing. Cool. Uh, and I brought the uh, 
travel world with me here to look at. Ah, you could so we have zoom um, in a bit. Demos. <laughs> Some hardware. <laughs> Uh, like this. All right, uh, so tell us a little bit about what's going on on your, your hardware board here. Yes, uh, down here we have the power supply. Okay. Uh, it's uh, on the first version we built, we had a uh, PC power supply uh, that could handle about 35 units. Uh, this one is much smaller, and uh, since I will be lugging this thing around, uh, it yeah, was worth the money. You want something travel worthy? Yeah. And this is a very cheap uh, consumer switch. Uh, we have uh, connected the power supply both to the switch and uh, to a connection board here, where we have uh, small thin power cables going to the raspiers, uh, where we have uh, uh, soldered them uh, on the, uh, behind them. Uh, and yeah, then we have the raspberries themselves screwed onto the uh, wooden panel. Cool. So it's a fairly simple design. So any special considerations when you're trying to route power to multiple Raspberry Pis like this? Uh, on the small wall, it's, it's not uh, anything to think of, really. I wanted to be able to take off the Raspberries, yeah. because uh, when I was traveling to the United States with this one, I didn't dare send it in the uh, checked-in luggage. I, I took the uh, Raspberries in my hand luggage. Ah. So I, I wanted to be able to detach them by, by simply plugging them off like this. Nice. Uh, but um, on, on the real big wall... They're uh, just hard soldered uh, on them. Yeah. Uh, the, the big wall, we have uh, thin cables, and then we connect them to thicker cables before going to the actual power supply. OK. Otherwise, nothing to, to think of, really. Cool. And, uh, yeah, we got the results we wanted. We were able to run uh, sustained load tests for several weeks. And uh, wow. uh, all that time, we had about 90,000 concurrent connections <laughs> and uh, 100 business transactions per second. Nice, so nice. So quite a lot of load. Yeah, and this is not something, I mean, you, you homebrewed a solution with Raspberry Pis, but if you had to buy an enterprise-grade solution for this sort of load testing, what would it have cost you? I don't know, but I can say that uh, we looked at um, using uh, Amazon Cloud, and uh, they wanted uh, about 16,000 US dollars per month for this kind of uh, performance. Wow. So $3,000 and we can run it for as long as we want is, is much cheaper. No, that's very cool. All right, so in closing, um, how do people find out more about the Raspberry Pi wall? Uh, well, they can always go to uh, my blog, um, and um, they can, uh, if you just search for Raspberry Pi and uh, Code Mint or Raspberry Wall, I'm, I'm sure it will uh, show up there. Uh, and they can listen to my talk uh, tomorrow at 3.30 uh, here at uh, J Focus. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, and um, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Mm -hmm.